Climate change. Climate change. What comes to your mind when you hear those words? Maybe it's melting ice caps in the Arctic, sad polar bears floating on a single piece of ice, or perhaps it's Al Gore in front of a fancy PowerPoint presentation. And I get it, a lot of that feels kind of distant, but here's the thing, climate change actually hits a lot closer to home than you think. We've been talking with physicians for the last few months, and what they've told us is that climate change affects key things like our respiratory health, our nutrition, our exposure to disease, and even our mental health. Now you might be thinking, yeah, that's unsettling, but what the heck does that have to do with climate change? Well, let me give you a few Canadian examples. Just over the last few years, wildfire season in Canada has become more extreme and prolonged. It's very clear from the record that the forests are drying, all our land is, uh, particularly in the central part of the province, and forest fires are um, a consequence of that. Just last summer, British Columbia was actually forced to declare a state of emergency for 10 weeks due to wildfire threat. Not only were 45,000 people forced to evacuate their homes, the smoke dramatically affected people's respiratory health. Numbers were off the charts on BC's air quality index, which led to an increase in emergency department visits for respiratory issues, orders for Ventolin for asthma, and hospitalizations for breathing-related problems. One of the main factors behind these wildfires is that BC's forests have been drier than usual, in part because of altered rainfall patterns and hotter summers. And that can be linked back to climate change. Here's another example. The risk of contracting Lyme disease and other vector-borne diseases are on the rise in North America. That's because the host of these diseases, like ticks, have been expanding their range of habitat further north. As you see a disease spread northward from warmer to traditionally colder climates, the first thing that you think about is that it's because of climate change. Basically, areas that were once too cold for ticks and other hosts for diseases are now warm enough for them to thrive. And this spread of disease is not only happening on land, but in the sea as well. We had some Vibrio cholera here within um, the region this past summer. We haven't seen it before. Vibrio cholera lives in the marine environment, but certainly with the rising water temperatures and other pressures, I think these things are becoming more prevalent. And all of that can be traced back to, you guessed it, climate change. Still don't believe me that climate change affects our health? Well, this one's hard to stomach, but the availability of our food and water is being impacted as well. In Cowichan Valley First Nation on Vancouver Island, salmon has become a threatened resource. I'm a Coast Salish person, and we are people of the salmon. The river has salmon that come upstream to spawn, and in a lot of years past, there has hardly been enough water, and we're waiting for the fall rains to come. These rivers are drying in part because of the increase in our average temperature, and that's just another way of saying climate change. And it is people who live most directly with the land that will be the quickest to see their nutrition affected by the changing climate. Many of our indigenous people still live quite close to the land, so they engage in traditional activities like berry picking and hunting. It still makes up quite a large proportion of the lean protein calories for Dene people in the north. And without access to traditionally and culturally appropriate foods, people are forced into unhealthy habits. When people can't access their traditional food sources, um, they often will find low-income food. Um, that's usually filled with chemicals and not very good and leads to obesity and such things. This pressure that climate change puts on our food and water systems does not stop there. A common thread in all of these examples is climate change's impact on our mental health. One of the biggest factors is the implications to mental health. This does cause a lot of stress, anxiety, um, and especially for people who uh, work in the agricultural industry or indigenous peoples, people who live very close to the land, who depend on it for their livelihood, are going to be some of the first affected and some of the most affected from a mental health aspect. When these environmental changes are happening in your own community, the effects on your well-being can be dramatic. Things like not knowing whether or not you'll be able to feed your children, or having to be cooped up in your house because it's too smoky outside. After an extreme weather event like a flood, fire, or storm that forces one to evacuate their home, 
People often experience symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. And when landscapes you've grown up with your whole life become unrecognizable, that can lead to a distressing experience known as solastalgia, the distress caused by environmental change, often described as the feeling of being homesick when you're already at home. These are only a few Canadian examples. Researchers have identified a plethora of other health impacts resulting from climate change all around the world. Because at the end of the day, climate change is such an all-encompassing issue where its downstream effects have the potential to affect so many aspects of our lives, right down to the cells in our body. It's so complex, but it's all connected. That has led the World Health Organization to say that climate change is the greatest global health threat of the 21st century. Now, I get that this can feel pretty overwhelming. Maybe you're thinking of ditching your car, or giving up meat entirely, or never taking a flight ever again. And those aren't bad ideas, but ultimately this video is about changing the way we talk about climate change. It isn't just about melting Arctic ice and polar bears. It is not some abstract thing that is just happening in the background. It's about our health, and that's something that we can all relate to. Health is important to us. When things implicate our health, things get done. Policymakers and citizens take action. We stop buying plastics with BPA in it, we stop putting lead in paint, and we stop thinking cigarettes are so darn cool. Well, right now we're finding out that as the world gets sicker, we get sicker. And if we start talking about climate change in a way that recognizes that fact, maybe more people will start caring about it. Trying to link it all together is sometimes overwhelming. And the tendency is just to throw our hands up and say, oh, we can't do nothing. Let's just deal with the simple downstream problems. When, in fact, if we all work together, those upstream problems are solvable. That's one of the reasons I'm hopeful, because when people get in touch with how they feel about it, they can't stop thinking about trying to do something. We are getting to the point now that this is going to affect the health of everyone on the planet. It is already to some extent, and we have to recognize that and um, treat it with uh, the importance it needs because of that. I do think that um, by reintegrating culture, by reintegrating connection to the land, um, and essentially showing our stewardship for Mother Earth again, um, you know, we'll all be healthier for, for it. Climate and health. It's, it's the right fight, in the right place, and at the right time, um, and uh, we're in it. Difficult experiences are often what makes a human. This is an opportunity to find out what we're made of. We have a chance to save the world.